inside the O2 Academy in Brixton and we're about to go inside and interview Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach because they're on tonight with Stone Sour. Let's go inside. Take my obsession. How you doing? Fantastic. I'm uh, glad to be here. Stoked to be at Brixton Academy. Really stoked to be here. Awesome. And are you glad to be back in the UK? Oh yeah. UK dates are always great. We always have good shows here. One of my favorite places on the earth to play rock and roll shows is in the UK. I just, I love it. There's a spirit of rock and roll here that's just alive and well. Nice. And you've got a uh, US tour that you just announced. Yeah, we just announced with uh, Stone Sour. We're doing a co-headliner over there. Um, New York's one of your first places. Yeah, yeah, we start to... start up on the East Coast, and uh, you know we've just enjoyed touring with these guys so much over here that you know when we go back over to the states, we're like, let's do it again. The only difference is when we go back to the states, uh, we'll be playing 70 minutes, and they'll be playing 70 minutes tonight. We get 50 minutes, so it's a little shorter set tonight. No so way. it's like get in, just. Ah. So that's your kind of compromise. Yeah, yeah. You know, come on, give us a little more time, and we'll do it. Favorite track from your uh, new album, your personal. Oh favorite. man, personal favorite track. I would say probably before I die. I didn't know that that song. Um, something about that song, sonically and stylistically, it's very different um, than everything we've done with Papa Roach. You know, we kind of experimented more with some electronic beats and loops and samples and stuff like that. And uh, so we kind of mix the rock and the electronic really heavily on this on this track. And. Uh, I don't know, it was really kind of a turning point in my life um, in the process of making the record. I went through hell making this record. I, uh, I have a substance abuse issues and I just got, I got fucking issues, period. <laughs> I got baggage and issues, I'm all. Do you think you've got an addictive personality? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 100%, yeah. And so, you know, it got a hold of me again and the drink and the, the whole deal and it changed me and it just, I had to stop. So I sobered up and then a couple weeks later I, split with my wife of 14 years and uh, that was a uh, I was like just all I felt was just I was like a raw nerve you know what I'm saying I'm yeah. pain, just pain and uh, you know I really saw the power in the music you know and writing a song like before I die was one of those turning points where I just kind of saw like in this I was just in the in the dark in the shadows and I just saw this little piece of light yeah you know and I just grabbed onto that and you know wrote a song and it's a, you know, I come out on the other side of the record and well, you hope to be the lady scary. came back, the lady came back. Oh, so you're not an eligible bachelor anymore? No, I'm not. Oh, for all of you is out there. I had you fucking excited for a <laughs> second. Oh, that's what's up. Uh... Kind of part of this new metal movement along with like corn and Limp biscuit and death tones do you think that new metal is something that still exists nowadays um, or do you think it's kind of evolved it's it's definitely evolved it's cool to see you know death tones have evolved their style corn has evolved their style and we've all kind of we all came in in the same time and era and you know aside of like limp biscuit they kind of like stayed a bit the same you know what i'm saying like with the rapping and the you know the their style, you know, and but uh, you know, a lot of our bands, we uh, we've just kind of grown into our own and just carved our own paths and you know created careers for our for ourselves and it's a uh, it's cool and I'm still fa I'm still a bit, I'm a huge Deftones fan. Me too. Deft that new record, I fucking love it. I'm it's like sick, isn't it? the last couple of records are really great, you know, and so to be able to see our peers still out there killing it and making music that is a. Uh, definitively their style and it doesn't get mixed up for anybody else it's rad so it's cool to see us kind of carving our own niche as we move along
got a random question for you. If you had to be a cartoon character, like anyone out there, who kind of fits your persona? I am a cartoon character at times. Um, I don't know, fucking, uh... I'm definitely Spongebob. Why, I'm Wiley Coyote. Okay, good. Wiley Coyote, dude. Because like he that. keeps getting... Or, or, or no, does, is it Wiley Coyote that keeps getting crushed by the piano on the... I think yeah. so. Yeah, he just keeps getting fucked up and he keeps coming back and he keeps getting crushed and beat up and broken and he just keeps coming back. And that's, that's just... Good. I think that's just kind of my... I should get that tattooed on me. Maybe. I need to get a Wiley Coyote <laughs> tattoo. but one that I really want to ask. Do you believe in aliens? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely believe that there's life outside of, I mean, if you think about like the size of the universe and the galaxies and you know, the Milky Way and the cosmos, it's like, we're just like a speck of sand. Yeah. You know, so when, they th when you think about it like that, like the grandiosity of the whole scheme of things, there's gotta be. There's got to be life elsewhere. I definitely think so, in some kind of weird frequency or something, I don't know. Oh, I, I believe it, most definitely. I mean, they're out there somewhere, you know? They might be, like, sending signals to us, or we might just be, like, a pet farm for them. Hopefully. That might be good. We're an alien ant farm. Yeah, exactly. TV viewers out there who are in hard rock or metal bands, what kind of advice would you give to them about maintaining their vocal cords? Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's it's just, for me, it's been a progressive thing over the last, I mean, I toured very heavily for the last 10, 12 years and uh, partied very hard, you know, maybe lay off the cocaine and the vodka and yeah, the Vicodin, you know, like <laughs> keep that to like a happy medium, <laughs> don't go too extreme. You know, I mean, your body is your instrument, so you got to treat it accordingly, you know? And, and uh, it's it just, it was terrifying when I had to get that surgery. Um, but I'm religious about my warm-ups now. I do a warm-up every day. It only takes me 12 minutes. I warm up right before I go on stage. My voice is consistent this entire tour. I haven't been hoarse once. Um, I've been going to a vocal coach out of, uh, vocal coach out of New York City. Her name is Melissa Cross. Um, she has a DVD out called The Zen of Screaming. And uh, she teaches uh, the likes of uh, myself, Randy Blythe from Lamb of God, um, Homeboy from Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, I don't know his name, that's why I call him Homeboy. Okay. Dude from Bring Me the Horizon. That kid screams and he's, his, yeah, his voice mm -hmm. is strong, you know? And, uh, you know, Brett from Shine Down. So she teaches very, you know, hard rock, aggressive singers and uh, teaches them technique uh, to be able to preserve their voice. Maybe they want to go check her out. Just Google Melissa Cross. She's dope. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for today. Enjoy your show. Thanks for having me. Fuck yeah. I'm glad you dressed up too. It's cool. Fucking ladies, <laughs> take, fuck, take note. She looks tight. <laughs> thank you. Be right.